Many missions in video games are straightforward and normal. We're not talking about those today. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, 10 missions that messed with your brain. Starting off with number 10, the Lendell Catacombs in Elden Ring. It's a game that normally plays it pretty straight with you. Sure, it can be obscure and mysterious sometimes, but it almost never does anything to really mess with your head. The only major exception, though, is the Lendell Catacombs. The only way to even reach this place is first to go through a large portion of sewers, already a massive and confusing location. So when you get there, it's already disorienting, you're already confused, you're already somewhat lost, probably a little frustrated at this point. Nothing about the dungeon seems out of the ordinary at first, but as you go through it, eventually you get to a point where you just end up back at the beginning where you started, only this time you're seemingly trapped. The exit door that was previously there is now walled off, so you're forced to go through the dungeon again. Only now, it's different. Enemies are in different locations, there's a monster here and there that's actually mourning a monster you killed in a previous loop, along with a few other changes. In total, it's not that crazy, but if you've been playing this game for hours on end, through the already paranoia-inducing sewers, you might notice that you've stumbled into a PT-style dungeon out of nowhere, and it, it might freak you out a bit. A big reason it's so effective is there's nothing else like it in the whole game. At first you think you're imagining things and then you're like, wait, was that wall always there? Cause no, it's the game messing with your head. And number 9 is Break On Through from Black Ops Cold War. The Black Ops games tend to be pretty trippy by the end of their respective campaigns, but none of them get quite as brain-bending as the 13th campaign mission. Just trying to explain what's supposed to be happening is making my brain hurt, but the gist of it is that the CIA is implanting memories into your brain to try to get you to reveal the location of a Soviet agent named Perseus. How this works is that your handler, a guy named Adler, recounts a time when your character was in Vietnam. As the story goes along, you're free to either choose to follow the stuff he's saying or go your own way. The path split near a ruin, so he took the right fork, not the trail to the left. Regardless of what you choose, the scenario repeats multiple times, each time getting just a little stranger. In one sequence you fight an army of Adlers, and another you get swamped by zombies, right out of Treyarch zombies mode. It's basically Call of Duty's answer to the Stanley Parable. And while it's not the craziest thing to occur on this list, the fact it's a major level in what is usually straightforward Call of Duty military stuff, it's surprising. And number eight is the Scarecrow sequences from Batman Arkham Asylum. It's one that's pretty well known at this point, so it's probably not gonna like shock anybody at this juncture. But back when the game first came out, I remember one of these Scarecrow sequences is really getting me. Like, there's three in total, but two are really mind-bending, the first and the third. The first one occurs in the morgue, where Batman gets a dose of the fear toxin and hallucinates Jim Gordon's death. At this point of the series, everything was possible, so it wasn't far-fetched to imagine them killing him here. It gets creepier, though. The section where uh, the only way to progress is to exit through the door you came in from was pretty trippy, but the part that really messes with people's heads is that final Scarecrow encounter. This one doesn't just try to scare Batman, it tries to scare the player. First by triggering a fake freeze, followed by the game resetting. This time, Batman's been replaced with the Joker during the prologue, and at the end of the section, Joker shoots Batman with a game over screen and everything. I've waited a long time for this, Bat. Let's start the party with a bang. <laughs> Back in the day, this game definitely fooled me for a section. Probably fooled a lot of you guys too. It's only for a second, of course. The game makes it obvious that this is an illusion, but it doesn't take a lot to mess with your brain at this point. And number seven is Vault 106 in Fallout 3. Like Elden Ring, for the most part, Fallout 3 just plays it straight, so when it gets weird, wow does it stand out. This is one of the creepiest vaults in the entire series, Vault 106, the one with all the psychoactive drugs in the air. When you enter, the place is filled with insane survivors who attack you on site, something that's not completely unexpected, but what's surprising is when you go deeper into the vault and you find out the gas that was used to make everybody in the vault go nuts, uh, it's still there. So you start to experience visions of people like your father, Amada, and the Overseer from Vault 101. Some of these visions even try to attack you near the end, where the tunnel snakes appear to fight you. There's stranger ones too, like one area where you can see a room that appears upside down, and you read computer terminals, you can sometimes find like hallucinated messages directed at the player. Combine that with a dark and creepy atmosphere, these vaults all have, and it's a pretty unpleasant experience that will mess with your head.
At number six, under the windmill from The Witness, there are many parts of The Witness that could qualify for a list like this. Tons of crazy, mind-bending puzzles that make you feel like your brain's expanding when you finally manage to solve them. When you find out that you can draw lines anywhere, not just the white puzzle boards, it can feel like your brain just totally exploded. That's pretty wild as it is, but the game manages to take even that concept a step further. Under the windmill, you can find a projector room that plays various movies. These movies seem like they're just a reward, like I have to find special codes hidden around the island to unlock them. It feels like, oh, I found the thing. Wow, neat. But when you get really deep into the game, then you start to realize there's got to be more to them. And yeah, it's on the list, so there, of course, is more to them. Occasionally, some of the videos, you can see these circles. And if you manage to get the timing right, you can actually draw a line from the film to complete a secret puzzle. Uh, there isn't even just one. There's multiple secret puzzles hidden in these videos. It's basically like you're solving a puzzle in the real world. There's a reason there's so many of these videos seeing the Witness-style puzzles all over the place in real life, because the game basically trains you into doing it. It's one of those situations where the game isn't just messing with your brain. It's kind of expanding. It. You never really look at the world quite the same way after getting too deep into the witness. And number five is Moo Training in Earthbound, a famously quirky game that is pretty friendly as far as old school RPGs go. There's one moment in the game that's particularly strange, however, and it's burned into the memories of anyone who has played it. When you first meet the fourth party member, a character whose default name is Prince Poo, you have to undergo a sequence known as Moo Training. Goal is simple. You sit on top of a mountain and ignore all distractions. You'd think that'd be pretty easy, but the game goes a long way to try to trick you into making a mistake and ending it early. Starts off simple enough, right? Character tells you to end your meditating immediately. Of course, obviously that's a trick. If you actually stop, you have to restart. It gets a little trickier after that, though. The screen turns dark and a spirit appears and says it'll take your arms and legs. If you don't want to fail, you have to say yes to that. Like, all right. You go ahead and take my arms and legs. I don't need them right now. It does get crazier from there, too. When you agree to let it take your eyes, the screen goes black, or take your ears, all the sound stops. Eventually, it has to take your entire mind. It's a tense sequence that it seems like it goes a little too far, and, and you feel tempted to stop, but your goal is to ignore all distractions, so you just have to go with it. The rest of the game is nothing like this. It's just a fun adventure story, so this moment catches a lot of people off guard. It's also one of the most inspired sequences in the entire game. Game, and it still messes with my head when I think about it. And number four is the countdown ending from the Stanley Parable. For a game as famous for messing with the player as this one, there actually isn't a lot of mind-bending stuff here. Usually the game plays pretty fair with what you can and can't do. It's limited what actually happens, and uh, some of the endings are a little unexpected, but it never really lies to you. Outside of this ending. This ending it lies to you in. It's actually one of the most basic ones, so it's the one that a lot of players get early, and it's probably the meanest of all of them when you look back on it. Uh, to trigger it, you have to get the mind control machine you find by following the narrator's instructions, but instead of turning it off like the narrator tells you to, you get this ending and you turn it on. That triggers the countdown ending, where the game gives you two minutes to run around the control room and try to figure out a way to turn off the countdown that ends in your death. There's buttons, keyboards, and various controls all over the place, and they all seem like they should do something, but the whole thing's a trick. There is nothing that you can do. That's what makes the ending so bleak. The game's messing with your head. It gives you the room to run around and press buttons and do things, and none of it matters. Even with the narrator literally telling you that nothing can be done, it still feels like you should be doing something. Why else would they put all the buttons there? Eventually, somebody just opened up the game files and confirmed that the buttons have absolutely no purpose, confirming what the game was telling us. Again, it's a game that doesn't really lie to you a whole lot. It can be mean, but it doesn't really lie. It's a gamer's instinct to look for secrets, though, and this ending takes advantage of that. There's even some new dialogue if you play it again where the narrator makes fun of you for thinking you could get a different outcome this time. Sometimes all it takes to mess with the brain is a puzzle with no solution. Until the moment I say, happily ever up. And number three is Lilith. PK3 with Doom. Sometimes missions and levels, ha they don't have to trick you to mess with your head. They just have to be disorienting, frustrating, and intentionally unpleasant, and that's enough to get the old brain chemistry a little unbalanced. Lilith.PK3, probably purest distillation of that idea. It's an aggressively unpleasant series of levels for Doom designed to drive players nuts. 
not by messing with their inputs or pulling tricks on them, but by breaking the game so much it's almost scary. The bizarre, glitched out visuals, jarring music, and creepy text all come together to create one of the most weirdest, messed up levels in anything, and it manages to do it without any traditionally horrifying elements, just a lot of glitches and bugs exploited for maximum effect. <laughs> At number two is the Gate of Illusion from La Mulana. The previous entry is an example of the avant-garde messing with your brain. It's weird and disorienting. Well, this, this is just cruel. Found fairly late in the game, the Gate of Illusion is a diabolical maze designed specifically to leave players frustrated and confused. Secret portals, exploding chests, secret ladders, and important items hidden in seemingly random locations with no rhyme or reason or clues. Uh, that's just the start. The whole area is designed to drive you totally nuts by being incredibly obscure about its puzzles, which by the way, don't work the same way as the rest of the game. And on top of that, they're confusing and difficult to navigate. It's already a challenging game full of a lot of tough puzzles, but the stuff here, it, it just takes it to the next level. Many of the clues you find in this area straight up lie to you about what you're supposed to do, and in every way, it's designed to just mess with your head. And finally, at number one is Cat Mario. 1-1. Released back in 2007 as a freeware game, Cat Mario, aka Siobhan Action or Mario from Hell, is a recreation of the first stage in the first Mario game, but designed to completely mess with your brain. Everything you expect to happen, whether you've played a million platformers or you've just played the first level in Mario a million times, uh, it's all subverted here. Blocks move, they get away from you when you try to bop them, enemies appear out of nowhere, when you jump over pits, invisible blocks are placed in the exact spot that it would need to kill you when you try to jump. Yeah, it's, it's all right there. Basically all cruel tricks you can think of for any platformer, they're in this game. Along with a few more you probably couldn't come up with on your own or expect, uh, at least when it first came out back in 2007. These days, Kaizo hacks are pretty ubiquitous, but they rarely go as far as this game does to just screw with the player's expectations. It's one of those things that after a while you think you got it figured out, but then there's something else that you didn't expect and your brain just melts once again. Quick bonus for you, Solid Snake starts breaking the fourth wall. The whole experience gets very strange in the last hour. While it's mostly just weird, when you get a message saying to turn the game off now or the screen suddenly switches to the game over screen, but you can continue playing the game in the little window that appears in the corner, uh, then yeah, they're really just trying to mess with you. It is a legendary sequence. We've mentioned it once or twice already in other videos, so that's why we're putting it as just a bonus rather than a full entry, but yeah, we couldn't not mention it here. What's wrong with you? Don't worry, it's a game. It's a game just like usual. You'll ruin your eyes playing so close to the TV. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If you like this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is a course of subscriptions, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time, right here on Game Ranks.